The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the country. It's Mark from SolidCam. We'll be doing our 30-minute free training session today for SolidCam Live. With me today, as always, is Kevin Rankle. Hey, hey, Kevin. Hey, one. So today, we actually got two emails from uh, one of our uh, regular viewers, Steve. And Steve actually asked two questions. First was a question, the other, the other email was kind of a follow-up to a previous question from this week that was also Steve's. And to start, we'll go with his first email. So you've got a part similar to this where um, you want to use some of your 3D recognition toolpaths. The recognition toolpaths look at the stock and the target and they figure out how to machine the part. Uh, but you don't want this toolpath to go into those holes. If we were to do this HSM linear, uh, let's see, I, I got to check what I did on over here. Let me just see here. I already messed it up. Oh, yeah. No, I know what I did here. Okay. Um, so you don't want to... Yeah, so I came live. No, <laughs> I, I, this is the same file I used in the training video on the same topic, and that's probably why it already looks like that. So you can see I got it to go over those holes rather than if it were to go into those holes, which is what the default setting would be. And to show you what I mean by that, let's just actually take this one and let's do a save and copy, which I should have done in this. I think in the original video, I actually reversed what I'm about to do here. So let's say by default, your HSN toolpath is gonna to look at the target. And whenever you do training with us, or you look at how we do things in the training videos, usually we talk about how, okay, the solid recognition toolpath, the default of the target, you wanna just use the target. And that's oftentimes what you would use this for. The drawback here is this part has those holes in it, and I don't wanna take this tool and go in those holes as you can see now, because it's fully recognizing that stock. And with this HSM linear, going down those holes actually doesn't look that great. You can see the walls look that don't look great. So what did I actually do to make the HSM work in the previous one? Well, this is one of the few times where we'll say, instead of using the target, actually select a new geometry. And if you look at this, I actually did select a new one. It defaults to the name model one. But essentially what's going on here is yeah, I have selected as my model, and I think it's used somewhere else. I can't really use it, show it again, but let me just see if I can show it like this. No, okay. So what I actually did was inside of that new geometry button, I selected my target, so my solid, so it has the pockets and all that. And then in the geometry of this part, I went into design model and I actually added these faces, these caps to those holes. And maybe, Mark, let's go over that, because um, I actually just had a call with the customer running the same issue on how to cap those off. Okay, perfect. So let's go and do those all again. So I'm going to hide these again. So we'll just hide them. And essentially what it is, is you're using the surface functionality of SolidWorks. And in this case, what I did is I just made it really simple for myself. I just made a filled surface. So with filled surface, as soon as I close off an area, it fills that area with a surface. Easy enough. And my usual rule of thumb is I always like to give a color to these things, just so I know that they are uh, cap surfaces or they're not part of the original model. So I usually like to do something like that. Let's just make this one green so we differentiate it from our previous one. So you do something like that to cap it. Now, when you have a different surface like this, you can use the other functionality over here. Uh, I believe with this one, I actually added a sketch line so I can make a filled surface on that side and then a filled surface on that side. So uh, I just made two flat surfaces because this is already flat. But when you do surfacing inside SolidWorks, pretty much like any other surfacing you do in any other CAD software, uh, you're gonna do a sketch, and then from that sketch, you're gonna uh, develop a surface, or from edges, you're gonna develop a surface. So uh, there is limited surfacing functionality inside SolidWorks, I mean, it's in the name. It's more about solids than surfacing, but you can do surfaces inside SolidWorks, and like we did a couple weeks ago, the, the, the uh, geometry can help in the programming side. And this is one of those times. Cap surfaces can really help with your programming, especially when you're looking at a part like this. When I go and I actually, let's just open this guy up and I'll make a copy of this one and I'll show you how I did all that with the cap surfaces. You can go new geometry. So instead of the target, I'm gonna click on my solid. I'm gonna click on my surface. And now what solid, uh, solid cam is seeing is the same solid, but with this cap surface here. It thinks that these two surfaces are one face of a solid. So when I go to regenerate this, 
it should, in this case, it's still gonna go down this hole, but in this case, it's not gonna go in that hole. And that's what you see there. It continues that tool pass right across there because it considers that to be one face. So that's essentially what the cap surface can help you with. Um, so this is really good for adding geometries to get something to work. Um, the, the, one of the questions was, well, in some cases, what if you did a configuration? What if you didn't show the holes in one configuration, generate your toolpath, and then in another configuration, you show your holes? Well, remember, any time that you suppress something, you're actually removing it be, from being considered. So I have another file where I'm actually using configurations to control those holes, and we'll see how that can actually lead to some issues. So it's the same part file. I just went back to the original SOLIDWORKS file and added a configuration. The configuration, as you can kind of see it blinking there, is without those holes, without those extrusions. So let me just quickly bring all this up to date. So let's do a synchronize. And then what's wrong with these guys? Nothing, okay. Now going for it, you know, Mark is showing us um, 3DI machining and HSM here. Um, but if we were using HSS, uh, you wouldn't have to do this. We could just do a, and we've talked about this quite a bit um, in the HSS, as well as the five axis that you could just do a, uh, on your link, skip over that hole. Yes. Yeah. Or that. Or with uh, with HSM, if you were to use constraint boundaries a certain way, you probably could cap those services with a direct line as well, rather than going down the hole or some sort of filtering. There's ways around this as well, but when you start looking at parameters, that also can lead to some issues when you're not uh, fully familiar with your geometry or um, it takes a little bit of time to dial those parameters in. So, uh, but absolutely right, I agree with Kevin. If you were to do this in HSS, you could actually just tell it that instead of um, you know, uh, gaps or whatever, you could just say, do a direct pass and it'll actually do a continuous feed move across there. Let's just do a save and calculate on that. Okay. Actually, what we'll do is to bring this up to date. And again, SOLCAM Live, I didn't even notice that I still had this set to, that one's set to target, but this one is not. And this one was because in the original file, I was using cap surfaces. So that's probably why I got my 3DI machining to not rough out that area by using model. But I'm gonna put this at target because in this file, I'm using configurations. So in one configuration, I wanted to see the holes. I wanna see that this tool is gonna to go down there and machine those holes for me. And then in the other configuration where I've suppressed those holes, we'll see the effect that it takes. But that is actually gonna be the issue because in this case, I can just use configurations to hide and show the holes in certain instances. So in this instance, we have holes. And if I show the tool paths, we're going down those holes. We're roughing them and we're finishing them. As soon as I go into configurations, you can see this configuration is called no holes. I'll just double click on it. I have the setting set to automatically calculate the toolpath. So this is how configurations work inside SolidCam. But you'll see that it disrupts some of the toolpaths. So you see that, that the eye machining wants to be recalculated and the, I, and the HSM is not doing anything, which is fine. But a lot of the times, you're not gonna just go all the toolpaths for one configuration and all the toolpaths for another configuration. Chances are you're doing a configuration to hide and show the holes for just the machining of the holes or just let's say the HSM. The HSM is the only one that has a problem with this. Um, so why would you use configurations for one toolpath and then leave the other ones kind of up in the air? There's a way to program this so that you can do all the parameters, all your settings so that they follow what configuration you're on, but then it gets a little messy because HSM needs to see the model or it needs to be selected a certain way, whereas uh, 3DI machining, it just cares what's on screen or you can select a certain model. So basically configurations, it's either an all or nothing thing, whereas with the cap surfaces, you can address the issues of one particular toolpath. In this case, the HSM is, one, is the only one that really has a problem with those holes. We don't want HSM to go down those holes, but we kind of do still want to rough out those, uh, those holes. So when we do configurations, essentially you get something like this. If I just go back where now I show the holes, I'm recalculating and I want to rough out those holes based off the new target, 
but I don't want to finish those holes based off the new target. And that's where configurations can come into place, uh, come into play and kind of mess things up. And plus, when you change configuration, uh, depending on your settings, you're probably needing to be recalculating it. Or if you see those little uh, red hazard symbols there, it now doesn't know where the bottom is or something. So it's more of a parametric thing as well. But I say when you have holes and you're trying to avoid them for your 3D recognition toolpaths, use a cap surface. I find that to be the easiest one because then you can just uh, use them for what they need to be done and then hide them. And then only that one toolpath needs to see them anyway. And then going forward, you can select just your target. Or if you need to, you can have a combination of different cap surfaces, different configurations of, not configurations, I shouldn't say configurations, but you can have a different combination of hide and showing of different surfaces for different purposes. So let's say the HSM toolpath that does the entire part, I put those cap surfaces so, the, so that the linear works. But then later I wanna do some sort of, um, let's say I wanna do uh, constant ZHSM on just this hole, but not this one. Well, I can leave the cap surfaces on this one and then leave it off of this one and do the constant Z on that. So you can actually hide and show, select different things uh, to get your toolpaths to work on their own basis, whereas configuration is for the entire part, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Any questions on that? Clear as mud. I mean, yeah. Clear as yeah. Mud. So uh, the other thing I wanted to cover was, Let's go and I believe in my recent camp parts, we have the other part. The other question that was uh, risen today was kind of a follow up from uh, either yesterday or the day before and exactly what adaptive step down actually does. So again, uh, I believe Steve's in attendance. So Steve, this is your part that you recently sent me. This is uh, the part where you're using the helical toolpath, helical HSM on this part here. And you can see that it has a vertical portion, some curved portions, another vertical portion, and a tapered portion. And uh, very similar to what uh, Steve was asking about earlier in the week was he wants a 30 thou step down here and a 3 thou step down on here. And you can see that he's achieved that. But it's not because you were able to say only on this portion, 30 thou, only on this portion, 3 thou. What it is with the adaptive step down, if we go in there, Anytime you see adaptive step down, it's kind of like what uh, Kevin and I described the other day. You are giving this toolpath a step down of 30 thou. So no matter where it's touching this part, whatever it analyzes that it needs to machine this material, it's gonna do a 30 thou step in the Z direction. But obviously on this taper and in this curvature, a 30 thou step would leave actual steps of 30 thou on there. And that's not staying true to that surface or that surface. On these vertical portions, a 30 thou step is still touching the entire surface. The tool is still making proper contact with that surface. You're getting that 30 thou step, you're finishing the part. Remember, this is a finishing tool path, so that's what's mattering here. In adaptive step down, we automatically insert extra steps and we're checking what we're machining here. And if there's any portion of here that falls in between that 30 thou step, it's gonna add steps of 3 thou. So a good example of this, let's see if we can get a, um, See if I can get a side view. Actually, let's use the solid cam side views and let's get a Y point of view. There we go, okay. And let's see if I can get a drawing tool. So if we do 30 thou step here and here, this bit right here, it's 30 thou. Hopefully my drawing skills with my mouse are not confusing you, but basically this is 30 thou right here, let's just say. So 30 thou consistently across that purely vertical face will be in contact with that surface. We're cleaning that up like we like. But if we do 30 thou steps on here, up in Z by 30 thou, up in Z by 30 thou, up in Z by 30 thou. So that is 30 thou right there. Again, not the scale, bad drawing skills, but you can see that that's about 30 thou, let's just say. Um, there's still some curvature here that's not getting touched. There's this whole area right here that's not getting touched. So as soon as SolidCam recognizes that there's a little bit of stuff that's left there, it says, okay, let's automatically insert some additional steps. So those are 30 thou steps now to get a little closer to that. So when we look at that toolpath, let me just go to my drawing tools, turn it off. When we look at that toolpath, that's exactly what we're getting. We're getting those 30 thou steps 
And then it notices here that it needs to add a little bit more movement here to get closer to those surfaces to better finish the surfaces. You can see that we're getting 30,000 there. Does that make sense? Is that, uh, Kevin, do you think that's a fair description of how that works? Yep, <clears throat> absolutely. As well as if you were coming down to that floor also. So if we were coming down to that floor and we told that floor to stop right there, uh, no, go go that exact same view that you just had up. There you go. So, uh, and go up to that radius. So if we had 30 thou step downs and it just on this top little piece coming down the radius down to the, the flat right here. And what's gonna happen is if we don't have those adaptive step downs turned on as well is it's gonna leave a big chunk down at the bottom because from the top half down to, and if we draw it like the way, oh. I gave you control <laughs> so you can point at stuff now. So with the, um, you know, Mark's drawing tool right here would be 30 thou, and then right here would be 30 thou, and then, you know, another 30 thou would be down inside the part. And obviously HSM is not gonna go down inside the part, it's not gonna gouge, so it's gonna stop, and you're gonna have this little square chunk sitting right here. And that's where also the um, insert, uh, the automatic adaptive step down will be applied as well. So then you can actually see it right here, and explaining pretty much is what you already did, Mark, but we have more passes right here than we do up here now. Oh yeah, okay, let me let me draw what he's talking about because I know I know exactly what you mean now. So it's it's basically the same idea, but it's a little more uh, uh, drastic over here, but let me get that drawing tool back up. So let's say we start from the top and we do that 30 thou. So that's 30 thou, that's 30 thou, all the way down to here. And let's say the 30 thou is about here. And uh, now it's about to go down another 30 thou, but 30 thou ends right here. So the next step would be something like this. So you got all this area that still needs to be addressed. So what basically like Kevin's saying is we're starting to see that 30 thou over here because it falls in that area. It falls in the area that the 30 thou step didn't address. So now it goes back and adds the little 3,000 steps. Yep. Right, Kevin? Is that what yep. you mean? That's exactly. Yep. Something like that. So, any questions on that? Hopefully that makes if, sense. Uh, if Steve's in attendance, here. which he is. Steve, uh, does that make sense to you now when you see it on this part? And while we're waiting for uh, Steve to write back, that curly cue of your your start, um, that gets brought up every once in a while of how can I get rid of that curly cue right there? And that is gonna be under the link section for everyone. And um, it's gonna be our leads. And see so right now we are doing a minimal trimming and we also have a ramp helix. And you can see this over on the right hand side of a lead and we're telling it to do a ramp of you know 0.1 now if we put that at zero it won't do any ramp at all now essentially it doesn't do a ramp because we're not giving it any height to travel yep. in this ramp angle right yeah yeah yep and so now we're just doing an arc and so we're not I mean, on a particular one like this, there's no need to do a helix ramp into it because we're not plunging into the material. We're starting on the outside and just working our way in. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah, he says, yeah, looks good, okay. Uh, okay, so we, we're we close to the end. Okay, so I wanted to address, uh, so next week we are reducing the number of days down to two days a week. Currently it's Wednesday and Friday. That was the question we asked yesterday and the response we got was, uh, to be honest, only one person responded, <laughs> but that is one out of one person uh, responded saying that they want Monday and Friday. So right now it's Monday and Friday. If you guys want it to be different in terms of what days of the week we'd like to cover this, if I saw Cam Live, I'm going to put my email in the chat section. 
what you can do is you can email me with the day that you prefer to have SolidCam live. We're reducing it down because as you can see, we're, uh, we're getting uh, less and less topics to cover. Unless you guys have actual lots of questions to ask, you can email us using that same email. But any questions you send us, we'll cover in SolidCam live, but we're reducing down the days to two days a week right now. So right now it's Monday and Friday. So next week on the third and the seventh, is SolidCam Live. If you haven't already uh, seen the email, you should be getting an email because you guys registered for the webinar that it has been changed to Monday and Friday. So if you haven't seen that email, it's gonna be the same link. You can click on the same link to get into the same session, but uh, now we're only doing it on Mondays and Fridays. Um, next week, Monday, is Kevin's gonna be solo. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's another holiday in Canada, so I will be taking Monday off. So Kevin's going solo, so you guys have to bug Kevin with your ideas. And if you guys have noticed, Mark's always on holidays in Canada. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. It doesn't hurt to be in the best country in the world. <laughs> Voted uh, top 10 in the world for happiest countries, I think. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Monday is the first of the new class dates. It's uh, Monday and Friday for now. But like I said, if you guys would like it on a different day, Use my email. Let me know what days you'd prefer this to have uh, to 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 happen. Uh, we're looking to reduce the days, but if you guys want it, let's say two days a week, three days a week, one day a week, uh, it's uh, whatever you guys. It's it's this is an information session for you guys. So whenever you are available, whenever you guys uh, think you'd like to have this. Let us know, and we'll uh, we'll tailor the sessions to that. Um, it, and uh, I'm just going to do the closer. Uh, you can also use that email to get your own personalized training. So you don't have to always wait for 2 p.m. every day just to have this free training session. If you have training hours on the books, or if you don't, you can purchase them with your local salesperson. And your own personalized training sessions can happen whenever you are available. So on your schedule, day and time, let me know, and then we'll schedule a session. It's personalized. We use the phone or your mic and speakers of your computer, so you can actually talk to us live with your questions. Uh, you can ask your questions on any topic because it is your time. Uh, and we can even do your own proprietary parts. If you are from an organization that doesn't like to share your parts, or like you see, I mean, this goes on YouTube, so you don't even want to share it to that level. Absolutely, the personalized training sessions are only for you. They're only for the people you want to be in attendance. So if it's not just you, but you have a team of people, if you share that link and they all attend the same uh, GoTo meeting, it doesn't matter to me. I'm I'm here to help you guys help your team. So whoever you want to attend the GoTo meeting, or if you want to just do it on your own, absolutely. Uh, but all you got to do is just take my email, send me the day and time that you're free, and I will schedule the training session. Uh, if you know anybody that can benefit from SolidCam, uh, just let them know uh, about SolidCam, get them into a demo. If they get into a demo, you get that $100 gift card. And I think that ends today, unless next week we start the new thing. I'm not sure, uh, I guess Kevin will check on that, but it's either $50 or $100 gift card for your for getting them into a demo. If they go to sale, then for sure you get that 20% of that sale. And all you gotta do is just get them in contact with us. Either they call us, we call them. And if it goes to sale and it's because you helped us out, you get that 20% of that final sale. That's a good, uh, good chunk of money. Uh, today's the last day of the every day, obviously. So next week, like I said, Monday and Friday, uh, you can use the same link to attend those classes for now. And then once we change the dates, if anyone says they want a different date, it should be the same link. All we need to do is just get uh, ahead of that final day, and then we could just re reschedule all that under the same link. So if you've got any recommendations or any suggestions for what to cover in the class or what days to cover, what days to have these classes, use my email, let us know. Uh, this is for you guys. So uh, until, for me, until one week from now, <laughs> I'll talk to you guys in a week. You guys will talk to Kevin on Monday. Stay safe, keep your family safe, keep busy. We'll talk to you guys on the next class. Hey, right, Gary, everyone.